Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kunasa here. So no sales with Google Shopping ads? This is one thing I personally faced quite often in the beginning of my Shopify dropshipping journey. I mean, whenever I would start Google ads for my Shopify stores, for some reason, for a very, very long time, I would just not get any sales, if any at all. And there were a specific things I was seeing over and over and over again with these Shopify stores. And after a while, I kind of understood what the reasons were as to why I wasn't getting sales with Google Shopping ads. And believe it or not, these things are very, very common amongst a lot of people. So if you think that your situation is different than what I'm about to reveal in this video, hang on for a bit and watch till the end because I'm pretty sure you are facing the problems I'll be going over. Over in this video and if you haven't already faced them you'll face them pretty soon and that's simply because Google works this way and it doesn't matter whether you run a general store or a niche store or a one product store these problems if you aren't taking the correct steps are going to come into your Google shopping ad so it's better that you know how to fix them but without wasting any more time let's just understand why you're not getting any sales with Google ads and what the different reasons as to why this happens are so the first thing that you'll have to do in order to even start getting any type of results with your Google shopping ads is smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I would highly appreciate that if you do do that. But the first situation as to why this happens, as to why you're not getting any sales with Google Shopping ads, is the no impressions and no clicks problem. Now, this is one of the most common problems I frequently get asked about in my Instagram DMs. And that is, they've been running Google ads for a while, maybe two to four weeks, but there are no impressions and no clicks, which of course leads to no sales. I mean, what is the issue with no impressions and no clicks? And why is the campaign not spending anything at all? Well, the first thing you want to understand, especially if you're new to Google ads, is the first two to four week period on your Google Ads account are the learning weeks, meaning this is the time when Google is trying to understand what your products are, who to show them to, what kind of audience interacts well with them. And within this period, Google actually will not spend a single dime of your money. Now, that's kind of weird, especially if you're just coming from Facebook ads because you're used to just putting up a campaign and ad set with a specific budget and by the next day, at least some of it has been spent. But with Google, you have to understand it is a search-based platform. It takes time for it to spend any type of money and it needs to fully understand who the audience is so that it doesn't just waste your money. I mean, along with giving the users that use Google to search for stuff a good experience, Google Ads also wants the advertisers, meaning us dropshippers, to have a good experience. So it doesn't just want to go out and spend all of your money, unless it's, of course, running on an accelerated campaign type. But if you're still not getting impressions and clicks after about four weeks, then there is an issue. So what should you be doing in that case? Well, the first thing I would recommend that you definitely do is increase the bid by 10 cents. Maybe you can increase it by a much more amount if you're kind of not wanting to wait any longer. You can increase it by 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents. That's up to you, but don't do it too much. Otherwise, the campaign will start spending and it'll spend your entire budget in a matter of a few hours. And this is usually the main solution to this problem, especially after the four week period and you're still not getting impressions and clicks. Just simply increase your bid. The main reason why this may be the solution to this issue is because Google is having trouble winning auctions for your products. Your products could be higher priced products or there could be a lot of competition for your products. And because of that, Google is really having difficulty entering those auctions and winning them, which is why you're getting zero impressions and clicks because Google is just not showing your ads at all. So whatever your bid is right now, increase it by 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, but don't exceed more than 50 cents and wait for three to five days. You'll start to see usually that within the next one day, two day, three day period, Google will actually start getting more and more impressions for your campaign and actually clicks should start coming in. If you still see that there are no clicks coming in after five days, repeat the process. Increase the bid again by maybe 10 cents, 20 cents. And keep on doing this over and over and waiting for three to five days, of course, until you start to see those impressions and clicks coming in. Usually in my own experience, after I have about 50 to 100 clicks, maybe sometimes even 200 clicks come in of people, I usually expect my first sale or so. So if you're not getting the sale by 100 to 200 clicks, then something's wrong on your website. And I'm gonna be going over some other issues very shortly, but this is the first solution to this problem with no impressions and no clicks. Just simply increase your bid. But the next issue that is very, very common and I've faced it a lot 
is many impressions but very little to no clicks so if you're seeing that after the four week period you know you're getting hundreds and maybe thousands of impressions but there are very very little clicks and very little clicks i define as having a less than 30 percent click through rate in total for your entire campaign i'm not talking about the specific products individually but rather the whole general campaign if you have less than 0.30 or 0.40 click through rate then something is an issue and you have low clicks or very little clicks at all in this case what i recommend that you do is go on your google shopping feed app and check the settings make sure that all the settings are properly correct if you're unsure as to whether there is something wrong with the settings or not contact the developers of the google shopping feed app i know the main google shopping feed app is currently unlisted on shopify app store but there are other shopping feed apps that you can download for now because google shopping feed app is coming back very soon on the app store but make sure all of your settings are correct again if you're not sure as to what correct settings even are contact the app developers and ask them to double check for you in addition you should be checking your merchant center account oftentimes what i see is that if a lot of my products somehow get disapproved or there is some big massive error on my account which causes the entire account to get suspended my click-through rate and my clicks literally drops overnight or i won't even get any in the first place so if this is continuously happening in your case Log into your Merchant Center account, make sure there are very little errors for your products. And very little is anything below 5% in total. So if you have 100 products, only five products or less should have any type of errors with them. There are two types of different errors that you can have, the red errors and the warning errors. The warnings are in orange while the red errors are the bad ones. Make sure to avoid the red ones at all costs and you can have some orange ones that's fine but try to get them fixed as well because that is another thing that could contribute to the low clicks or no clicks or zero sales your merchant center feed plays a very very important role with how well your google shopping ads perform and in, in one of my previous videos i mentioned that i had a lot of errors on my google merchant center account so what i did is i worked with the shopping feed app developer team and the merchant center account team to fix those errors and what i noticed was a big big spike in sales the very next day that I fix these errors. So you want to get these resolved because that could simply be leading to why you're not getting any sales with Google Shopping ads. But specifically, if you're getting many impressions and low to no clicks, check your Google Shopping feed app settings, check your merchant center, but also check your SEO optimization and spy on your competitors. What happens is sometimes I'm getting good clicks for one product and then over the next few days, the clicks start to drop to a bare minimum to even zero. And when that happens, the first thing I do is check the SEO optimization, make sure that the keywords that I was ranking for aren't somehow disapproved. The second thing that I do following the first thing is spy on my competitors. What happens sometimes is a new competitor enters the market, maybe he's selling it for a very, very cheaper price than yours and he's ranking higher than you. In that case, he's going to steal all of your clicks. So that's why you could be possibly still getting a lot of impressions, but very little to no clicks simply because this competitor came in the market or your old competitor lowered his prices. So that's why you want to go with incognito window for Google Chrome and check to make sure that you're still ranking well for your specific SEO optimized keywords and that there's no new competitor selling for a cheaper price than you. Because if there is somebody selling it for a cheaper Cheaper price than you you have no choice but to sell it for a little bit cheaper or find another variation of that same product that may be higher quality and for the seo optimization specifically again check the pricing of the product and maybe change the product images this is what i like to do first if i see that a new competitor has entered my market and my clicks have dropped significantly or i'm getting very little to no clicks but a lot of impressions i simply look at the product images that my competitors have and then what I do is I go on AliExpress and I try to find a different higher quality image that can help me stand out of the crowd. Because if I stand out of the crowd with my image, then I'll get some clicks for those same amount of impression. And that could lead to more sales. But even after you do that and wait through to five days and you don't see any results, change the pricing. That's the last step you can take when you have the issue of many impressions and low to no clicks. But that brings me to my next point, which is you're getting many impressions and many clicks but very little add to carts, if any at all, and of course, no purchases. What do you do in that case? Now, this is a very special problem to me because this is something I was just recently facing. I had a very, very highly optimized website and I was getting a lot of impressions, a lot of clicks, but very little add to carts. I mean, my add to cart rate was 3%. 
whereas my main niche store has an add to cart rate of 10% or more. So this was a very steep decline and I was kind of confused as to why this was happening. Here are a few conclusions that I came to. So the first one is that I was just getting low quality traffic and sometimes this just happens. This is also very common with Facebook ads where you're targeting the right audience, but sometimes the CPM is through the roof. And because of that, you're just getting low quality traffic because Facebook is showing your ads to the wrong pocket of audience. And this could happen with Google ads as well. You're simply getting window shoppers, very, very cheap traffic. And they're just simply looking at the products, scrolling through your entire product page and then exiting out. The main reason as to why this could happen is because you have a low quality rank score. Now your ad quality rank is determined by several things. The first one is your click through rate and also your SEO optimization. But there's no real way to check your quality score with Google shopping ads. What you can check, however, is the impression share lost rank IS. This is a special rank which lets you know how many auctions you're losing because of your ad rank. And if you find that overall, this is above a 70%, 80%, 90%, especially if you're running a general store with a general testing campaign, this is something you're going to want to work on. And the best way to work on this is to improve your click through rates. When you have a higher click through rate, you're going to have a lower cost per link click. And usually if you have a high CTR, more people are going to buy from your website. So that means Google will associate more sales to a better landing page experience. And the landing page experience is part of the ad rank that is determined for your Google ads account. So very first thing you definitely want to work on is checking the click through rate, making sure to improve that. In addition, you want to check your impression share, see how many impression shares you're getting for your products. Again, if this is a very, very low amount for all of your products, if it's for some, that's fine. But if it's for all, there's an issue you want to again, work on getting that up. And the best way to do that is of course, increase your click through rate, maybe increase the bid that you have set on your campaign and also maybe try increasing the budget, but you want to do these changes one at a time. The second thing that I recommend that you do if you're getting many impressions and clicks and very little add to carts is check your product page quality. I mean, sometimes you'll be doing everything correct on the Google shopping ad side. So there's no issue with Google shopping ads. where the real issue is, is the product page itself. What I noticed on my own pages, I had a lot of distractions on my product pages and I lacked any type of trust badges or trust quality on my product page. So because of this, I had a very, very low add to cart ratio. And I know I mentioned a lot in my videos not to include trust badges, but nowadays I'm including these specific type of trust badges. They're special and not the ones that you see on normal drop shipping stores, but using these special drop shipping badges really helped me boost my sale. And if you want me to reveal them in one of my next videos, comment down below. But the best way to kind of increase the amount of add to carts that you're getting is to just check your product page quality, make sure to have high quality images, make sure that your descriptions are SEO optimized. And if your description don't have as many SEO optimized keywords, that is one thing you may want to work on. Simply put SEO optimized keywords in your description and that will kind of improve your CTR if these SEO optimized keywords are relevant to your product. Remember, relevance is key to finding success with Google ads. So the reason why I'm going over the product page optimization, even though the title of this video is no sales with Google shopping ads is because anything that you do on your product page directly relates to the results that you get with Google shopping ads. So these are directly correlated with each other. So first, of course, focus on your shopping ad. But after you do that, then focus on your product page in order to get more add to cart so you can get more sales. But that brings me to my next point, which is again related to specifically not getting any add to cards. What happens is sometimes there may be specific keywords in your descriptions for the products that are getting link clicks, which are driving these people away. It could be something about the our guarantee section, or maybe the shipping info has some bad information in it, or maybe the description itself is not accurately describing that product. Go over the description for the products that are getting the link clicks and make sure that this is not an issue for these specific products, because if it is, then you're just going to bleed it through money. And one thing I see is that a lot of stores don't even have any shipping information or guarantee sections on their product pages. This is another reason as to why you have very little to no add to cart. Simply add this and you'll notice that your add to cart rate goes kind of upwards. But along with that, what I see is that a lot of stores have distractions on their website. So just get rid of the distractions. Make sure that when somebody lands on your product page on a mobile device or a desktop that there are no distractions, they can go from point A to point B, which is from landing on the page itself to clicking the add to cart button very, very easily. You don't want to have any distractions would drive them away from taking that action. But that's exactly what you can do to kind of increase the specific add to cart rate. Again, focus on Google shopping ads, but go back to your product page quality as well. And that brings me to my next point, which is that you're getting many impressions, many clicks, 
and many add to cards, but very little purchases. What is the issue here? Again, I want to start talking about the specific product page changes you can make. First of all, check your add to cart page. Make sure there are no distractions there. A lot of times there are some distractions there. Or maybe it's just a slow loading add to cart page, which is leading the people to go away from your add to cart page. Another thing you can check is the distractions on the checkout page, or maybe the shipping information that you have on the checkout page isn't correctly aligned. So you want to make sure that those specific errors on your checkout page are properly aligned. But another thing that I noticed happening frequently is that there is the season factor or simply that the product is low in demand right now. So what do I mean by these two things exactly? Well, right now when I'm recording this video, it is currently December. 24th and it's Christmas Eve during Christmas Eve and the specific week of December 20 until December 26th 27th which is around or around Boxing Day the sales drop tremendously and this is not just for me but a lot of my mentoring students as a lot of my friends as well and that is just because of the season itself people are more willing to go to a brick and mortar store and purchase right away over there rather than go online because if they shop online right now they know they're not gonna get anything before Christmas so they would rather shop in brick and mortar store so that is the season related problem and when it comes to product it's the same thing the products that stop doing well at this moment are the ones that are currently dipping downwards a lot of products spike upwards in Christmas time and then take a big dip downwards so if you notice that your product and is in a big dip downwards don't worry you'll get a lot of impressions a lot of clicks and add to cards but very little purchases what you can do in this case in terms of Google shopping ads is lower the bids lower the budgets and slowly scale downwards there's literally nothing you can do other than that because it's just a seasonal thing and the product is low in demand right now but these are the main problems that you can find solutions to but the one bonus tip I would like to leave you guys with is when it comes to specific products that are doing well, you want to choose a specific product category for that product, which is closely related to that product. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? Well, I want to take you guys over to my Google Shopping Feed app for one of my products. So when you click on a specific product in your Google Shopping Feed app and scroll all the way down, you'll see that it says Google product category. Here is where you want to choose the specific product category, which is the closest match to your product's overall niche. And if you click on this specific thing, you can see that there are a lot of different categories that you can choose from. You want to choose the one that is the closest to your product. So for instance, if I was selling a cat bed, I don't want to choose the category cat supplies. I would rather choose the category cat furniture accessories or cat furniture because it is very, very niche downwards and it is the closest that is possible to my specific product. So that's exactly what I mean. And what I've noticed is that doing this kind of increases the sales because you give Google a clear idea of what your product exactly is. So this is something you may want to do if you're finding that you're getting impressions, clicks, and some sales for one specific product. Let's start by talking about exactly what consistency means with Google Ads. One thing you want to understand is that Google Ads as a whole is very, very inconsistent. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? Well, if you think about it, every single day there are new users entering the market while the old ones are exiting the market. Meaning, if for example, you're selling wireless printers, there's only so many people that will want a wireless printer on any given day. For example, if I'm in the market for a wireless printer and I see that your store is selling it and I buy from you, there's a very, very low chance that I'll come in tomorrow again on Google and type in wireless printer because I already purchased one. I really don't need any more wireless printers. So what that means is that within a span of a day, I not only entered the market as a new user, but I also exited the market, which is why Google ads is somewhat inconsistent in that way. In addition to that, every single day, there are new people popping up on Google shopping ads or Google search ads and old people exiting because their stores failed or they were unable to find any types of results because maybe they didn't follow my videos. Just kidding. But whatever the reason, new competitors enter and leave the market every day. This causes a big, big shift in the auction that Google Shopping Ads puts your products into. So keeping this in mind, you can expect a little bit of inconsistency with Google Ads in that way as well. But the third and most important thing is that there are a lot of big brands competing for a lot of the most popular products. And because of this, a lot of the times you'll face a lot of inconsistencies because these big brands, a lot of people trust those brands much, much more than just your random drop shipping store. So because of that, you're bound to face more inconsistencies. But that does not mean that it is the end of the world that you can't use Google Ads profitably. As I just showed you guys on my order metrics, 
I've been doing it successfully this year and I've done over half a million with 99% Google ads. If you want more info on this store, I actually did a case study a few weeks ago on this store, which you can check out. I'll leave the link in the description. But now that we've kind of talked about exactly how Google ads works, let's go ahead and start talking about the main point, which is how do I personally maintain consistency? So the first thing that I like to start talking about is the products because Believe it or not, the products is the meat of your business. What that means is that without the proper products, without you consistently adding more products, your Google Ads store is not going to be consistent, period. And a lot of people do find success with only 20 products, 30 products, but the problem is that success is very, very limited in terms of the time simply because within a few weeks to maybe even within a few months, if they get lucky, those products will eventually die out. That's just how e-commerce works. There's not a single product in the world which is gonna sell forever. So in order to really battle this, what should you be doing and what do I personally do to maintain this consistency? What I always recommend and what I always do is that every single day, Monday through Saturday, I add three to five new products based on the criteria which I've always laid out in my other videos. Number one criteria, over 20 to 25,000 monthly searches. Number two, less than five to seven dropshippers. And number three, minimum of 20 to $25 profit margin. If these three things you can meet for that product, you can count it as one of the five products or one of the three products that you add for the day. You want to be doing this consistently because without adding these products consistently, you will not be able to sustain your dropshipping business for too long. And this is mainly because again, as I mentioned, Google ads as a whole is very, very inconsistent. Consistently adding new products every day is going to help against the natural day-to-day -day fluctuations or inconsistencies of Google Ads. When one product stops selling on any given day, you can be sure that if you have 100 other products, there will be at least one to two more products that will kind of take the first product's place and sell on the second day. When you have more products, what happens is that each of the products that you have, specifically the winning products, are going to kind of bounce back and forth between sales. And that's exactly what you saw in order metrics where it kind of went up on some days, then it went back down and it went back up. That's simply because the main winning products on some days just didn't perform. But because I was consistently adding new products every day, because I had such a large amount of products on my list in the first place, other products kind of came in and helped me do the sales so that I didn't go in a loss on any given day. But in general, having more products kind of helps against the seasonality factor of certain products because some products are only summer products or some products are only winter products. When if they are big winning products for you and they suddenly die out, you don't want your store to just kind of go back to zero. And that is exactly what happened on this specific store where some of the biggest summer related products just stopped selling. Hence why you saw that big drop at the very end. But because I have over a thousand products on this store, the drop is slowly going back up and it will be back up to normal once my campaigns optimize again and once they start showing these other products which are more winter gear, a little bit more to the audience. But that is the number one thing you can literally do if you don't follow anything else in this video, make sure to follow this, which is add new products consistently. The second thing you wanna be doing and which I did to maintain my consistency is that I was excluding bad products, meaning those products which spent over my profit margins without any sales or bad keywords, meaning those keywords which spent over $10 or over my profit margin in some cases without sales. Simply get rid of them every seven to 14 days. One thing you wanna understand is that the more often you do this, the more often your campaigns will fail. Now you may be looking at this and thinking that shouldn't doing this more often actually help you and your campaigns? And the answer is no, simply because Google Ads is a time-based platform. Its algorithm basically resets every time a big change is made on the campaign. And if you exclude multiple different products, if you exclude multiple different keywords, that is considered a big change in Google's eyes. It's going to reset the algorithm. That means it has to start back from zero and basically go through the products list, go through the keywords list and try to optimize again. Of course, this time frame around here is going to be different for each individual because if you're running campaigns at a thousand dollars a day budget. Of course, you wanna be checking much, much more often, maybe every two to three days, but for majority of drop shippers who are just starting out or even those who are intermediates or experts not spending over a thousand dollars a day, you should be checking every seven days and for the lower budgets, every 14 days because you really want to let your campaigns optimize. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've always done with Google Ads, which is just getting too anxious and just changing too many things. That has always led to bad results. So you really wanna take caution in that and not make too 
too many changes too fast. Wait again, seven to 14 days. But another thing a lot of people fail to do is that they fail to divide up their products. They think that if they have just one single testing campaign, that's all they need to find good results and scale to millions of dollars with Google Ads. And that is far from the truth because one thing you will see is that once you start adding more and more products, your Google general testing campaign is going to have a very hard time going through all these products and testing all these products. So in order to battle that, you wanna have multiple different testing campaigns running. Nowadays in 2020 and for this specific store, I have four different campaigns running. Campaign number one is a major testing campaign with a high bid. Basically this is perfect for high ticket products or products with a higher profit margin. And when I say high bid, what I specifically mean is a bid of around 50 cents or so. You really don't wanna go above that unless you're selling products which are very, very high ticket, maybe up to $500 to $1,000 or more each, then you can go up to a dollar per link click. But otherwise, stick to around the 50 cent bid for this specific major campaign. Campaign number two is another general testing campaign with a medium bid. Now this campaign has a very, very selective focus. The main focus of this specific campaign is to divide out those lower margin products, meaning maybe around the $20 profit margin or low ticket products in general, meaning $20 product or $30 product, so forth. What I do is that I put all those products within this specific campaign and I set the priority of this campaign too high. The campaign priority for this first campaign is medium. What happens is that since the campaign priority is high, Google is going to favor those products within this campaign more than this first campaign. So even if the products are that are within the second campaign are also visible in the first, it's still going to spend from the second campaign, which is what you want because this has a lower bid. Normally what I've seen is that the lower bid campaign, this one right here, actually is much more profitable than the first one simply because this is kind of a medium bid campaign, which is much lower than the first campaign. And the lower the bid, usually you'll see that you're making more money, but sometimes if it's too low, you may not get enough traffic. So you wanna kind of be taking caution with that as well. But let's move on to the third campaign. And this is one specific smart shopping campaign. Now with this smart shopping campaign, the main thing that I'm doing with it is simply testing products which failed in my other testing campaigns. What I've often noticed is that products usually fail if the bid is not correct. And this could be because the bid is maybe one cent higher or one cent lower. So because there's such a small room to wiggle in, I really like giving some products a second chance. So this is what the smart shopping campaign is for. Usually the products that failed in the other campaigns often end up failing here as well. But I've had times where products that failed in the other campus actually really took up within the smart shopping campaign and they did majority of the sales. That's where the smart shopping campaign really shines because it has all of the control over the bidding and keywords and what keywords it ranks for, etc. So that's one great benefit of having a smart shopping campaign. The fourth campaign, which I run and I recommend you run as well, is a general testing campaign with a very, very low bid. That's exactly what I did for this store right here, which is why I was able to keep it consistently going. And this specific campaign runs at a bid of around 10 cents. This is a very, very low bid and usually you can expect very little traffic, but this campaign is great at catching those low hanging fruits because not every product does really well with high bids. Some products do really well with low bids and with a low bid campaign, what happens is Google is forced to go out and find only the highest quality traffic possible. So because of that, only high quality traffic comes onto your website and they end up purchasing because they're very high quality traffic. So that definitely helps as well. But this is kind of the general layout I'm doing for this specific store to really stay consistent throughout the month. But in addition to that, you should also be doing feed optimizations. And that is exactly what I did for this store as well. Now, what do I mean exactly by feed optimizations? Well, if you're using the shopping feed app by Simprosis, or any other shopping feed app, which does the task of pushing your products onto the Google Merchant Center, you can directly go on the shopping feed app and within that shopping feed app, simply edit the products. Now here is what I edit within the shopping feed app. I go within that specific product, which could be a potential winning product, meaning it has at least got me one sale and I choose a Google product category for that given product. What happens is when you provide a category for your product, Google finds it much easier to just go right into that category because you are the one who provided it and start ranking within that category. I've often noticed that this increases sales tremendously and it's a very, very simple tweak to do. But in addition to that, I start inserting keywords within the shopping feed app. Sometimes I do it directly from my Shopify store within the product editing section. And basically insert keywords that got sales and remove any bad keywords, which I had originally put inside the product page, but they ended up not getting me any sales, just spent a lot of money. I just remove them and replace them with the good winning ones, meaning those that got sales. In addition, I put all those winning 
keywords into the tag section. Now the tag section is the section on the right side of your Shopify product editing page. You wanna simply copy and paste all those winning keywords into the tag section as well because those tags are read by Google's algorithm. The final thing you wanna do is you wanna insert a product type because nowadays this product type is becoming very important in ranking on Google Ads. In fact, Google is not showing the product type if you have it on directly on the shopping ads. So this is really beneficial and something you definitely wanna do for those winning products. Again, what I like to do here is I simply like to put my main winning keyword as the product type. So for instance, if you're selling wireless printers and your main winning keyword is wireless printer, go ahead and put wireless printer as the product. Type. But this is one amazing way to get those sales coming in even faster for longer periods of time to maintain that consistency. But that is not enough. The last thing you really wanna be doing in order to remain consistent is duplicating the product and trying out different things because oftentimes the specific product page that you have may not be enough or may not be converting as good as it could be. So in this case, what you wanna do is you wanna simply duplicate that product, which is what I did for this Shopify store in order to really remain consistent. And I tested different main images for the duplicated product and I also tested different titles for some of them. Keep in mind that you can create multiple different duplicates of the product that's winning. So you can have two, three, four, but I recommend that you don't go above four. So within these four duplicated products, be sure to test different images as well as different titles. You wanna test one thing at a time so that you know exactly what is working and what is not working. But in addition to that, another important thing you can do and what I was doing as well is testing different prizes. You can test both lower prizes, you can test higher prizes. And what you're trying to do here is you're trying to find out exactly what price is going to get you those consistent sales long-term because you don't really wanna price it so high that you're making a lot of profits, but you're only getting a few sales on any given day and some days you're not even making any sales. You want it to be where you're getting decent amount of profit Profits, but the sales are coming in very, very consistently on a daily basis. That is your main goal with this strategy right here of duplicating the product. But these specific things are exactly what I did on this Shopify store in order to remain consistent throughout the weeks and throughout the months. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.